Good morning. We are being joined this morning with Andrea Shem from the company of Rayo, the CEO and co-founder of Rayo. My name is Rebecca Hope from Block News, and this is an edition of Meet the Makers, where we talk to the CEOs and founders of blockchain technologies. Today we are talking about gaming. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you here. You are tuning in from Frankfurt, Germany, right? That's correct. Yeah, just the greetings to the world from Germany. <laughs> it's great to be talking to you today about something that you're very passionate about, which is gaming. Um, and you have been a little bit frustrated with how advertising looks in the gaming world, right? Yeah, absolutely. Would you like to just um, describe to us the problem that you've identified? So basically, um, for everybody who is a gamer, uh, you know what I'm talking about with pop-ups for everybody else. Basically, current in-game advertising works like this. You play your game, and in the middle of your game, you click on a button, or sometimes it just pops up, and then you are interrupted for 30 seconds. You watch an ad, and then you either get some in-game rewards, or you get nothing. And that's basically it. We don't like that as gamers ourselves. We don't like the user interruption. We like a clean and smooth user experience, and this is why we came up with our own solution. Fantastic. So your own solution is, I like it very much, basically you're incorporating the advertisements in the game, in the actual visuals mm -hmm. of the game. Can you explain that Correct. a bit more to us? Yeah, of course. So basically, um, we have developed a plugin for gaming engines where developers can set up ad spaces. This can be like a TV screen, uh, can be a billboard, can be a banner, can be a storefront. So as part of the surroundings, it's more like product placement, as you know, from movies, TV series, and also from the real world. So basically, we place ads inside the video games without interrupting the user experience, but instead rewarding him for giving his attention to the ads. Have you seen any other company do this before? Uh, there was one attempt, I think, like 13 years ago, but back then not everybody had internet and um, so it was a completely different time and um, it was also done a bit differently and also with our blockchain, which is a very vital part of our system. Let's talk about that, the blockchain technology. How is it actually designed, um, this new advertising way? Yeah, of course. So basically we use uh, blockchain for trust and transparency, which is lacking from the uh, advertising market in general, as there's a lot of ad fraud. So basically multiple billions of dollars are lost every year due to bots and basically ads are getting paid for without anybody really watching them. So we use a blockchain to tokenize every single ad impression of actual users. So then we write in the metadata, how long was it on the screen, how big was it on the screen, where is the user from. All this data gets written into basically one token. So we tokenize this view, we uh, generate a score for it, how, quality, uh, how big was the quality of the ad impression, and then we bill based on this score. So basically it's transparent that everybody gets billed the correct amount and also gets paid, uh, get paid the correct amount from the developer side as well. Do you see this revolutionizing the industry? What is the, the market that you're looking to disrupt here? Yeah, absolutely. So the gaming market is the biggest entertainment market in the world with over $120 billion of revenue uh, last year and rising constantly with sometimes two-digit uh, percentages. Digital advertising is, of course, the biggest advertising industry as well. So we are combining the two biggest industries out there. Um, and there is a lot of distrust and there's no transparency. And there was a questionnaire actually, um, which is the biggest problem in digital advertising right now. And the number one answer was ad fraud. So we are here to solve the biggest problem of the digital advertising ad industry, basically. Mm -hmm. Ad fraud and all the bots and all the waste of money. Um, and so for the, from the advertiser's perspective, how will this look? From the, if they want to run an advertising campaign, how will they be able to do that? Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, developers set up an ad space and then they go into our marketplace and basically offer that ad space uh, through programmatic advertising. So advertisers can then put in filters like I want to advertise in games from the EU uh, for everybody that is above the age of 12 and in fantasy games. Or they can just say, just get my ad out there. So it will be an automatic matching progress, uh, process. Um, based on the parameters set up by the developers and the advertisers. So yeah, we have the ecosystem where they can register and then get placed and matched automatically. I like how you're using already existing models. That's the models that you know many companies use um, for matching uh, Upwork, for yes. example, anything else, um, those filters. So you're, already just, you're just combining what already exists and trying to make it more efficient. And I hear that you have <laughs> already got access to 40 million gamers um, $150 worth of ad budget. That's amazing. How did you pull that off? 
<laughs> yeah, so basically we did a roadshow, um, we attended gaming conferences, we attended blockchain conferences, so we traveled quite a lot, I think we attended over 50 events in the last couple of months, wow. and we met a lot of people, and it was really fun to see uh, developers come on board and advertisers come on board from every region, and basically we're onboarding partners like one a week now, because a lot of people are um, luckily sharing our view that this was a, a great step uh, towards the future of gaming. And yeah, they can't wait to get started. And uh, yeah, so we. <laughs> and obviously, they trust you. I mean, you, you allow them to take up a, a little demo or um, to to show them. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and they obviously can trust the system and that it's designed in a robust way. Could you talk about that a little bit and um, how it's going to be <laughs> so scalable? Yeah, sure. So. Um, we didn't want to start with the whole process of the ICO with just a white paper. So we have our solution already uh, working, up and running, our version one. So we can show that uh, in a live demo, screen, screen sharing and stuff like that, so people can see that we actually can deliver what we're talking about. And the good thing is, as it's a software solution, basically it's uh, only limited by the number of games, which are a lot, so it's uh, very, very scalable. And our plugins already work for the two biggest engines in the world, which is the Unity and the Unreal Engine. These are engines basically used by around 60 to 70 percent of the developers based on medium. So that's a lot of potential market coverage as well. Mm -hmm. If you have so many um, new partners, like one a week, as you said, a nice high rate, um, <laughs> how, why do you need an ICO? Uh, so basically for market implementation, so our version one is, uh, 1 is already working, so we don't need that much money to develop it. But um, every market has different aspects and different needs. Mm -hmm. For example, um, the gaming culture in Asia is different from the EU, from Latin America. So what we want to do is basically uh, do a market implementation. There are also more engines out there than just the Unity and the Unreal Engine. So we want to cover that as well. And yeah, we just want to uh, basically get rolling, uh, improve a few features. So for example, one feature we're thinking of is also an, uh, enabling 3D asset exchanging. Um, so for example, that a bottle can be exchanged dynamically, because right now you can exchange the videos, the banners and the sounds dynamically, but with 3D assets it's a bit more tricky. So we have a couple of more features planned and a lot of awesome stuff, and for that we need a bit of money, yes. <laughs> yes, now who's going to develop that? So we have our own developer team, um, like we have uh, we're a good mix of uh, both business people and developers. We also have a couple of freelancers who help us with the various engines because it's a very specialized job. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're working with partners all around the world. We have people sitting in Italy, in Thailand, in the Netherlands, in the US. So these are highly specialized developers who work with us and some of them have already worked with us for over one and a half years or two years. Mm -hmm. So this will enhance the experience for the gamer. Right? Yeah. They'll be able to buy or exchange products within the game. Um, so they can't uh, interact directly with the ads, but they will get rewarded with a, a kind of a gaming score. Okay. And with that, they could either pay it out or this is up to the developers. They could use that to purchase some in game assets as well, yes. So you still. This is a feature plan for the future. <laughs> yeah, but you, but you yeah. want to have some form of exchange for the gamer in the game. Exactly, like it's a payout at a certain level. So after you've earned, uh, you've watched a lot of ads and you've earned a certain threshold basically, then you can, uh, yeah, get a payout. So it's making it more interactive. It's strange that nobody else has done this before, don't you think? Yeah, but it's a very special and unique way. And I think you need a lot of different aspects. Like you need the in-game uh, aspect, mm -hmm. you need the marketplace, you need the blockchain, and you need to have the business perspective as well. So these are four aspects that uh, have to work together. And um, yeah, luckily for us, we have a very eclectic uh, mix of uh, team members with okay. various backgrounds. So yeah, we just found together. And I think that's the, the, one of the secrets behind our uh, basically yeah idea. So you're a rare mix. Um, so on the business side of, of the mix um, and the marketing side, I'm curious to know what, yeah. the, what the campaign strategy would be. So you said you want to, with the ICO, and, um, you want to target certain areas, but um, have you mapped out a plan for that and how you would go about that? Yeah, sure. So um, we already have uh, two people lined up who will join us uh, for business development. They are experienced with over nine or ten years of business development and gaming, mm -hmm. and they will um, help us with the strategy. Basically, it's a lot of attending the events. Um, it's there's a lot of developer forums, for example. There are also, uh, of course, PR is a huge um, deal. Uh, we're in talks with one of the biggest PR companies in the world. 
to have uh, designed the campaign and just wait for our go, basically. And we also have a few distribution partners, especially in Asia, where locals will help us set up shop, basically. So, yeah, we will adapt to the needs so of the markets. Us, yeah, you, you take, you've got your advisors in PR and you, they, they'll analyze the case and um, see where you'll start, Absolutely. right? Are exactly. there any regions that you're thinking this is going to be really great for, um, just from a so, yeah, of course. So basically for us, uh, we are based uh, in Switzerland and Germany, so the EU is obviously a good target. Especially the Eastern European market is very, uh, very nice, and one of our team, Igor, speaks Russian fluently, so he will help us develop over there. Um, the APEC uh, region, the Asian market, is the biggest one in the world. China, Japan and South Korea are all top six countries. Mm -hmm. uh, the US being the second biggest, so basically US, China and EU are uh, very interesting, but to be honest, gaming is a global phenomenon and Latin America, for example, is getting stronger and also there we see more and more coming from Africa. So basically it's everywhere, it's just a matter of priority, mm -hmm. but as we want to be everywhere, but we don't want to go too fast, this is why we need some money and um, yeah, set up uh, offices, staff, basically locally. Okay, and you have a token sale, a pre-sale running at the moment, can you tell yeah. us a little bit about that? Yeah, so currently it's our private sale uh, that is ongoing um, and we will announce how much we raise in the private sale uh, closely before our ICO and our public sale starts on the 4th of August, so in 15 days. Fantastic. And what have you, have you seen some good results so far? Yeah, absolutely. So we're very happy with how it's, uh, how it's going on and yeah, we can't wait to start with the public sale. We also have a, a basically a community contribution, a bounty campaign yes. where people can join and spread the word about us as well. Okay, fantastic. So I can get involved. Um, and then from the user's perspective as well, um, how do you see this transforming? Would, would it be within the next two or three years or um, what would be a realistic mm -hmm. vision? So the great thing is that our launch partners are really um, kind of eager to start. So they are constantly nagging at us, when can we start? So we will. We are confident that we can generate our first basically close beta use cases just with our launch partners in, in this winter, actually. And then it will take off um, with the like a live version next year, maybe Q2, Q3. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we are confident because we're getting so much good feedback and so much traction that we will be up and running within the next year. And then let's see where it takes us from there. Um, so a couple of the, the main partners, let's run through them and just talk also about the actual games and what, what kind of games um, you think will be the best for these to be used in. Yes, so we see a lot of sports games. Um, there are simulation games. Um, so basically it's more of a, not really like the genre, but more the setting. So in a fantasy world, you wouldn't expect to see, I don't know, a Coca-Cola ad. But uh, in a real time or in the future, maybe advertising is basically everywhere, so it could even enhance the realism. The great thing is that the developers are really creative, of course. Uh, that's why they're making video games. So, for example, there was one developer who was um, developing a, a Viking game, and he said, "Well, Vikings drink a lot, so let's just show like beer and I don't know, match and vodka ads because it will be fun." Vodka so, ads for a Viking game. Yeah, exactly. And Vikings drink a lot, so why not show uh, basically alcoholic ads? I was like, okay, this I would have never thought of it, but sure, why not? <laughs> okay, so that brings a little um, interesting question. So, obviously, you'd have to consider how old the the gamers are, right? Is there any oh, yes. kind of requirement there? Yeah, this is one of the settings. Basically, we have this parameter and filter settings where developers can set up, uh, set up like how um, how we which age range the game is, and the, uh, and the advertisers can say, I want to advertise only from 18 plus because I'm offering alcohol, for example. And also we are implementing a user registration mm -hmm. where people can register themselves uh, to get rewarded with tokens for participating in the whole ad cycle. And to do that, they have to uh, basically upload their identity on for sharing that. And then we also know how they are, um, they get rewarded with the tokens. And also a few benefits like vouchers and discounts from their favorite friends as well. Okay. And then how do you verify the age? I mean, how do you know if somebody's not just lying? Is there any So we do a we do a so-called KYC check where they have to basically upload like a selfie for example with a um, with an ID mm -hmm. so we can verify that it's really a real person and not just some I don't know some kids saying oh no I'm dirty. <laughs> okay. Well, that's comforting to know. Um, and then tell us about the companies that you're partnering with already. 
Yeah, sure. So, um, for example, we're partnering with VRES, which is a, a virtual reality company based in Asia. Uh, they have uh, up to 50 million gamers in the virtual reality space. We have also the biggest um, Hungarian ad agency. I'm afraid I will not be able to pronounce the name correctly. Hunesh. We also have great developers from Germany uh, with Kinetic Publishing and Swiper. We're also partnering with a platform like eBonus and yeah, we are onboarding a couple of more uh, as we go. And yeah, we also have some pretty cool partners who are with us even after the ICO um, from our advisory board. These are people experienced in marketplace and gaming. If you could um, say any challenges that you have already identified or you've had, um, what would you say that is? So um, for our um, ICO token, it was pretty clear to go with an Ethereum ERC20 token. For our internal token, where we tokenize every atom, we need a lot of scalability, high throughput, but we also need to be GDPR compliant, so we need some kind of privacy settings. So identifying the correct blockchain is a tough task. Luckily, there are a few projects like ERS, for example, or Cardano. Um, we're keeping our options right now with a tendency towards ERS because it's the only one live now. But that was kind of hard to find a fitting solution. And also, of course, um, yeah, there's so many great events out there and so many great places to go. Mm -hmm. So we just went uh, everywhere in the world. But um, yeah, it is, it is sometimes kind of hard to identify the best events, the best places to be, basically. Because it so, can be a waste of time sometimes. So you have to prioritize. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, we are, we're not a team of 500 people who could go everywhere. So sometimes it was uh, we were offered five events at the same time and where do we go? So um, I, I love the, uh, the blockchain world, but um, it's, it's, sometimes it shows that it's really new mm -hmm. and that uh, there's so much stuff going on and it's sometimes hard to sift through what is the correct one yes. or the best one. <laughs> that is a challenge. You've got to prioritize and realize that we only have 24 hours in one day. You still have to yes. develop you know, your product and then um, get that up and running and still go out there and network. It sounds like things are moving pretty quickly and by, you say, winter, you already have some of your technology implemented. Yeah, absolutely. Like, we want to test uh, and provide the first better use cases as fast as possible for our cool and great large partners. And the integration is pretty simple. The case, we would just develop a plugin. I'm not a developer myself, I'm more of a business guy. So, um, but still, I can integrate this plugin and set up an ad space in like five minutes. So, it's pretty easy to do. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing with us and chatting about your passion for changing the monetization in the gaming world. Do you want to share some of your social handles or where people can go and get their tokens? Yeah, of course. So, first of all, thank you for having me. Uh, I had a lot of fun and thanks for asking so many great uh, questions. Um, so if you want to know even more about our project, you can do so at ico.frio.io or you can join us at Telegram where we're basically online if we're not sleeping. So yeah, just reach out to us and looking forward to meeting some of you on the next event as well. We're talking to Andrea Schem from Frankfurt, Germany, and we've been talking about the company Vreo, V-R-E-O. Check it out. Thank you so much for joining me, Rebecca Hope from Block News in an episode of Meet the Makers.